Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Proving Ground Circuit Qualifiers. I am Sierra Dawn, joined here yet again with RMC, but we have a new special guest on. We have Nidhogg. Hello. How are Hello. you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah, I was waiting for this. I was actually watching the game earlier. This actually seems like a pretty nice production. Like, I didn't know that Amateur had this kind of scene going on. <laughs> well, on behalf of production, <laughs> yeah, um, I, do now. I will thank you for them, because I'm sure they definitely appreciate hearing that. And we're glad to have you on. Our next matchup as well. It should be fun. It is going to be York Lions going up against Winthrop. They had a little bit of a rough time last week. Um, RMC, I don't really know if there's a better way to spin that. Uh, no, not not really, unfortunately. Uh, group A last week was a little bit one-sided in the way the games did play out. And it came as quite a surprise because... As we've heard, you know, York University, a very scrappy college, uh, a little bit surprised themselves that they've made it as far as they have, and they're looking to get whatever they can out of this experience here, maybe an upset win or two. But Winthrop, on the other hand, was top four in PGCQ1. <laughs> and for them to drop their game to Bogged uh, in the manner that they lost as well, because it, it didn't really look like Winthrop had many ways back into the game once they had fallen behind, I think came as a surprise to most of the followers of the amateur scene here. Yeah, it's definitely a little tough, but like you were saying, things were one-sided, but we do have some really strong talent in 100 Thieves Next and in Bogged as well. So <laughs> as much as it's, you know, an 0-2 kind of, kind of sucks for these teams, they were going up against really, really strong teams. But then going into today, Ninhog, since I know that you've caught mm -hmm. a little bit, what is your initial thoughts of this first match that we have? So I'm looking at these groups, and I actually realized that there's like a huge disparity. I was listening to Sniper's interview about like mm -hmm. uh, the non LCS, like some teams don't have LCS players and whatnot. I, I recognize like like maybe half of these names, and so I chose Winthrop as like the the winner for this one, just based on like how many people I knew. Like I know Kenji, I've seen Vex around. He's been around for a while. Frost Forest, I believe, played a little bit. I I, I don't know what York. I believe I've seen Invent before, but the others, maybe they're just playing under different usernames, but I genuinely have no clue how it'll go, besides the fact that Vex and Kenji probably will do really well because they've been here for like five, six years. I mean, I've been playing this game for like eight years, and I can remember them being here for quite a while. That's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? It's fair, Nidog. Uh, to be fair, when I look at the York University lineup too, I'm not as familiar mm -hmm. with them. They are new. I mean, uh, after the PGC scenes well. After one game, like uh, I'll be able to see. Like I actually want to. Yeah. I, I haven't seen these teams play, so. Yeah, I believe well, it's best we... of three. Yes. It is best of three. Yeah. Um, we do have our caster predictions as well. So if we want to do a little bit of a cheat and look at what everyone else is thinking for the match, <laughs> we can do that as well. That's that's my favorite way to kind of figure out what's going on get a look in the minds of everybody else and it looks like majority of people leaning towards winthrop here <laughs> is that like everyone except two dudes <laughs> yep yes. pretty much it, it's kind of funny too because the two dudes uh one of them grapes right now has been doing a, a great job i mean second place tied with a whole bunch of other people um but grapes tends to vote with his heart so uh we'll have to see uh if, if grapes is right Let's but beat down the other person surprised me because beat down i think last pgcq was leading the way for most of the tournament with most correct predictions so maybe beat down knows something we don't or maybe beat down's a little bit closer to york university uh we'll have to see but for now, at least, the dog, I'm, I'm with you. I'm thinking Winthrop a little bit here. <laughs> I mean, I, actually, I guess there is, like, value in voting against the masses so that if you are right, you can be like, oh, see? Like, you look like a genius. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I will just pick Winthrop. I mean, maybe they do know something that we don't. Or maybe they got a little bit of a, you know, a peek at the pet <clears throat> predictions. Because the pet predictions, they went really strongly last time in 100 Thieves Next Favor. And they were not wrong. We do have... He is cat actually um for our prediction for our next match okay juno okay okay yeah 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 some time through york shrimps all right juno what do you think juno which of these what do you want look look scrim post scrim post oh my god oh my god it was instant Oh, oh, she gives us the flirt, the flirt. Oh, yes. Wow, she's very excited today. All right, well, Winthrop it is. 
What the? So that's, that's so cute. <laughs> that looked like a Winthrop 2 all to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. uh, it shows a winner. Yeah. yeah, that is a um, that's a very strong case. I am definitely um, questioning my own predictions a little bit after that one. <laughs> um, let's get a little bit of a look though at the matchup for today and the roster for that we're going to be looking at. Um, and I, I know that you were talking about you know names that were familiar to you. Mm -hmm. And is there any names here that really are standing out to you? Uh, n no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no. I, I will. Okay, all right. I gotta say something, right? Uh, I mean, I've seen. Frost Forest in the jungle, I played against them. I, I have no clue. I, I feel like people do this way too often. Whenever someone chooses a name for competitive, they just choose their name. Like their actual like name. Like is this Wally guy actually just named Wally? Or like did he choose Wally? You know what I mean? Like I, I haven't seen them in solo queue. I'm looking at like the OPGGs and they link to like nothing. I, I'd love to be able to see that. I don't know. So I, I can't tell. Oh, yeah. I believe okay. Wally used to go under uh, Whale or Monka. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so Monka. That helps. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, haven't... I don't know. <laughs> well, something we're definitely going to watch here is specifically the matchup between Sweet and Ivano. I know that's one we're, we have as our head to head, one that we're kind of keeping our eye on. And RMC, what is your first initial thought seeing this on the screen? Well, uh, it's an interesting matchup here between the two because I think both of them kind of didn't have the pop-off game that they wanted to have last week. And for Ivano, we saw them really just absolutely pop off in PGCQ1, became a massive carry for this team. But a lot of it was with Mordio as the jungler where Ivano served as sort of a secondary follow-up uh, to Mordio's initial burst damage. And with Frost Forest... We haven't seen that come through, so I have a lot of questions on whether Vano and Frost Forest can, you know, get that synergy going here in this game. On the other hand, for York University, sweet. On a team that struggled very, very hard against 100 Thieves Snakes, because we've seen how good 100X is, sweet actually has the second highest gold efficiency of all players in PGCQ2 after week one. And gold efficiency is basically how much damage you do in relation to how much gold you get. So the fact that you could do that in a losing match here... Theoretically, if you're not getting stomped in your lane by a ton of ganks, Sweet should be able to carry, right? <laughs> we'll have to see. Um, and I know we've talked a lot about kind of where we're thinking, but it is officially time for our live predictions out on here. So we'll go right to left here. You know, where are you at? What's your official prediction? Okay, uh, I'll just go with York. I'll go with that now. <laughs> okay. The reason why, <laughs> listen, the reason why I, I look at the OBGGs and the sweet guy is actually Sweet Tangerine. And I've seen this guy in solo queue. He plays Cass. He's a Cassiopeia one, one of like 17 of them, like a million of them. Uh, and Cassiopeia one tricks generally pull some stuff out of their behind uh, when it comes to these games. So I'm just going to go with that. And also I'll look really cool if, uh, if they win. <laughs> and if they don't, then I'll just be like, oh, well, you know. Never appearing on this broadcast again. Right, <laughs> right. Never yeah, I mean, after all, you did all your streamer, right? You're not collegiate, so uh, right. yeah, not, not, not your fault if you don't know the colleges. You won Renekton, right? Oh my! God. All right, RMC, which one are you going for? Uh, well, you know what? I underestimated Winthrop last time, uh, last tournament. So Throps up for Winthrop here. I've got them going uh, two zero, and I, I trust that they'll be able to pop off. Um, you know, we, we haven't seen the best of Vex, Savano, and Phosphorus just yet. I think there's a lot of space for them to pop off this game. And I think Mabud in the top lane has been an absolute beast. Uh, and if he could do that against, you know, the likes of Bogd, um, I think there might be a little bit of diffing the top lane. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. And if I'm wrong, don't shoot me, Lacan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For mine, I went very much for the same vibe as we were talking about the other casters maybe having oh. going, voting with my heart. Um, oh, wow. This is a team full of, you know, underdog mentality. We didn't come here expecting for playoffs, and I feel like that nothing to lose attitude could really take them all the way. I think it'll be close, but I think it's going to be a good match. Um, but that being said, it's time to get into the match i know our casters on hand i know they're probably excited and waiting to share their own thoughts so it's time to head into our next match of the day york lions going up against winthrop 
to see who moves on and who is going to be eliminated. Take it away, Dan Smax. We really are waiting here. We really, really are excited for this matchup. We've been talking about it for ages, of course. And as one of the closer matchups, I think it's difficult to predict either way. Most people have called out Winthrop as a favorite. But as our desk has already talked about, York has definitely demonstrated a lot of prowess in their at least matchup against 100 Thieves next. And I'm not counting them out of being able to take down Winthrop. Uh, touching on this matchup here, I mean, if you watched the last tournament, Winthrop placed top four in the whole event. And I think for those people coming in with those same expectations for this team, they're going to be a little bit shocked to find them in this matchup to begin with. You know, whoever loses this game is out of the tournament. Whoever wins still has to play one more to try to get into that top two in the group against Bogged. So if Winthrop does still win this one, they... Even to get into playoffs, they again have to play against Bogged and actually win that matchup this time. So Winthrop really in a bit of a pickle right now, Dio. Yeah, th this one is tough. I don't know where this goes on the hero's journey diagram that we've all seen, <laughs> but it, it doesn't feel like it's anywhere near the end for the Throbs. I like the Cassiopeia ban already vibing with what Midhog talked about a little bit yeah. earlier, the Cassiopeia one trick on the ladder. Now pushed a little bit further out of the comfort zone, and I'm curious to see what Sweet comes out with, because as RMC alluded to, both these mid laners got a lot to prove. Yeah, I, I like that uh, I like that Nidhogg completely changed his entire prediction because he remembered who Sweet was. Sweet Jiri, the Cassiopeia. He's if he's that good, then yeah, I mean I guess the I guess the prediction change is warranted. That's gonna be uh, one to watch out for, of course, not on Cassiopeia. Considering the other bands here, um, looks like York are actually trying to attack Kenji's pool just a bit with that Karma. He did play that one both games last week, if I remember correctly. It was Karma, Ezreal, and Zoe, the Constance. And, of course, the red side, uh, Gwen ban. That's, that's to be expected. I, I am surprised about the blue side Zeri ban, however, at least right. for right now, saying Vex is not going to be playing Zeri. We're going to be going a different direction with this, at least for this game. And it does set you a little further behind the Xin Zhao takeaway as well. It does leave us with, uh, I would say, the very obvious sort of Jinx priority. Although with Winthrop's most recent play style, perhaps we take a little bit of a departure there and York will get access to some of the most powerful Ooh. champions. Ezreal taken away. I can't say that it's meta, but I can tell you I like it. Yeah, York, like I like I just said, they- Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Okay, what? forget everything. What? I don't know what I was going to say. Uh, this <laughs> is, it's, it wasn't as important as this. Trindamir blew one for Winthrop? Dia, what? what was this in our notes? I wasn't in my notes. N anybody, <laughs> anybody on the broadcast team can can come in here and say that they had this on their notes. Oh my but god! It, it is wild to see the Trendemir uh, B one, and I, I think that though shaken and York take a little bit of time to recover, they do ultimately go with what you would think is the proper answer. Although at this point, everything seems to be going out the window. York are defaulting to this sort of very strong. Uh, the, the, very strong initial R1, R2, as uh, as we are being told, production, all of them, they knew, they knew it was up. <laughs> <laughs> why, why aren't we the ones pushing the buttons backstage then? Well, what's going on then? They're, I know. They're, uh, <laughs> if they're that skilled, then I mean, we might be out of a job here soon, Dia. So we gotta, we gotta make it work while we're up here. Lee Sin for Wally. I really like this pick for him. His mechanics on this champion were phenomenal last week. And yes, it was against 100 Thieves next, but he actually was able to make a lot of plays happen. And a lot of those were around Dior, who is on this ever so highly prioritized <gasps> Jinx as well. And you know, this is something that Dia, you did call. And I think you oh tweeted about it, right? I, I did. I'm, I'm actually. Why is this such an exciting draft? <laughs> it's like there's no. We haven't even gotten on Summoner's Rift yet, and already there are gasps, there are exclamations. Sir Kenji's Thresh is something that made me a fan of him the very first time that I saw him, and has continued to impress me. I was so sad to see him on Karma Duty all of last week. This is a change that I think is going to be really big for Winthrop. Malphite. Malphite. I really, I really like the Thresh point. You're, you're definitely right. I'm excited for Kenji's Thresh. If we're being completely honest, this is like the fourth most exciting champion that's been. I know, right? So like, far. it's insane. 
<laughs> Trade of your first pick, responded to by this Malphite. Um, we're expecting this to go up to Lacan, but you, you're picking this one specifically into Trindamir with Trindamir in mind. You have the attack speed slow, you can build a lot of armor, and because of this, Winthrop really do need to have magic damage in the rest of their composition, so Malphite can't get away with this. I know that Vex is on Winthrop, and it is my nightmare to cast a Vex champion on Winthrop's actual team for the confusion of it's it. However, I, I mean, I, I do think that it's probably a pretty good idea here. Vex does bring a lot of utility to the table, can deny a lot of Lee Sin's playmaking in an instant yeah. as well. And uh, it's pretty darn strong on this patch. We'll see if that ends up getting picked up, however. As for right now, they are focusing more on the support role than anything. And the Lulu ban for the late game is really nice. You take away that synergy with Jinx, you make it a lot easier to front to back for Winthrop. You know, that's the that's the reason that he changed his name on live server. It used to be I King Vex, and then the champion came out, and so he changed it to the only Vex. <laughs> because so he is the one true Vex. The, yeah, yeah, the yeah, champion. Yeah. <laughs> Felt and slighted it, by it. He, he was like, no, 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 no. We, we can't have people confusing us. I was the very first one. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's dibs. He on did the have it first. He yeah. did. Like we we can't we can't take that away from him. He was the Vex before uh, the champion was released. You know, and same same thing. If there there's a champion that comes out named Dia, then you have that one as well. I think I think Leona's probably the. I think Leona is probably the closest you're going to get to that. So. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. maybe there are more Solari champions that are coming. I you know I think that as we expand the League of Legends universe, it, it's it's only fair. I mean, we've got li literally I don't know a catfish out of a river. Like if we're <laughs> if we're if we're just like picking up fish, then surely at some point we we've got to get to more Solari. As the River King will be joining us, providing perhaps not the same safety as Lulu. Rather, not, not the same empowerment, but definitely a whole lot more invulnerability for Jinx. Jinx is feeling safe and secure in this draft, which is honestly rather surprising, considering the Trindamir and uh, now Udir that's been locked in as well. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of Udir, the champion, depending on which route you go, does provide magic damage. It is auto attacks still, though, and I feel rather concerned against Malphite. Uh, even with the magic damage of Udir, I'm really going to need to be wowed by what Ivano is bringing to the table. And I have been in the past. Ivano does have a very cool champion pool. That's about what, what I it's expected. Cool. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, if you're not going to pick a playmaker like Vex, you get to pick this extra backline damage with Victor. And he is really the, the other option. I think we could have seen something like a Corky, but again, auto attack based. So it yeah. makes sense to transition it to the other end of that stereotypical Corky Victor matchup to big hyper carries. And now you've got Aphelios and Victor chewing through the front line. And that Malphite, perhaps not as long for the world as we would have imagined. But split push still seems to be the big condition for Winthrop right now because right. Trindamir in the side lane, pretty darn hard to challenge. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know who is going to do that at all. Like Malphite can stay alive for a while, but I don't think they're ever killing him once it gets to a certain point. The interesting thing though, Malphite does actually have quite a bit of burst, and if Lacan does hit level 6 before Trindamir, you can actually solo kill him. It's a it's a pretty fun little mini game that Malphite has. Like if you whittle him down enough with Seismic Shard and you hit level 6 first, you just explode him. It's a fun time. It's, it's one of my favorite things awesome. about Malphite. You, I'm a Mastery goes... 7 Malphite player by the way. I've Are got you the actually? I am. That's I... that's support <laughs> vibes right there, honestly. I was made fun of uh, last night uh, for, for playing Aram. I, I got Ramus and I popped my mastery and it was mastery seven. My whole, everyone on my team was like, why do you have mastery seven Ramus? <laughs> I mean, it, these are important questions to ask. I feel like it's gotta be, if you mainly play support, like yeah. whenever I whenever whenever I get put topside, I'm like, well, I mean, why wouldn't I, right? Like, what are you gonna do to me? And I, so I think that that's fair. The reason I have Mastery 7 Ramus is because I, when Ivern was released, I was really excited. Because like you said, I'm a support player. And Ivern came out and he was really strong. And I was like, okay, I'm going to play Ivern. I'm going to learn jungle. And so I played Ivern. Whenever Ivern was banned, Ramus. Because <laughs> so I didn't okay. know what I was doing. And I played enough Ivern and Ramus that I have a lot of mastery on both of them. Dang. And uh, that's my story. And I like you know it, what? It, I'm, I'm a good Ramus player because of it. That's, what, that's, what, that's with old Ramus ult too, right? He was, yeah. So you're, he was the terrible yeah. one. So you're I, actually I really better went now. the trenches. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm a better person because I did that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're able to fly through the skies, just <laughs> flashing mastery as you do that. That would that's that would what Lacan's gonna do. Exactly. That's what, that's what he's gonna do in this game against all these auto attackers. Uh, I, I again, I really like this Malphite pick. It's really good at engaging, and that's something that Wally really appreciates on this Lee Sin too. Uh, to have all this extra engage for him, you have some burst damage to really help out a reset champion like this jinx i think this composition actually does work really well as simple and as basic as it actually looks yeah and and, and the syndra going to do a lot here as well to sort of keep that jinx safe especially from people like the udir because you don't have a button like the malphite that instantly gets you on top of this champion you have to walk at her and syndra is really good at taking melee champions and saying no 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 Give me a little bit more space give my jinx in this case a little bit more space as well as maintaining some pretty good wave push in this mid lane that'll really help out their junglers because this jungle matchup is going to be a really interesting one to watch with wally yeah. on the lee sin and the more pressure that he has coming from the mid lane the more we can see these mechanics start to impact the game the jungle matchup is definitely the most interesting thing especially for winthrop here because of course uh, the, the big the big asterisk to their top four performance is that they had a different jungler, right? They had Mordio in Frost Forest was taking a hiatus um, from this team to play on Cloud9 Academy, which is a pretty good gig. You can't blame him for that one. He's coming back in on a team that was, by all accounts, playing to jungle. He had, uh, he had Mordio playing his assassin play style, most known for the Kha'Zix, and Ivano was right there with him, playing the secondary assassin in these games. That's really not Frost Forest's MO. You can see it, I mean, based on the Udyr champion, but he's known for a lot of other farming champions like the Kindred. This is a very different jungler to have on your team, and I think Winthrop are starting to make that adjustment that you would expect when you have a, uh, a more farm-heavy, more facilitator jungler like Frost Forest with you. Perhaps a few growing pains in the first week, but it really sure. does, based on their composition, suggest that they're willing to go all in on this very farm-heavy playstyle, and perhaps one that does give a little bit more space in the early game. Space that we know York can make good use of. We saw in York's matchup against Hunter Thieves next that they were able to commit a lot of resources into the spot side, get Dior quite far ahead, and if they can do that against Vex and Kenshi, sky's the limit for this Jinx. In matchups like 100 Thieves Next, it's always good to remember the the really big pop-off moments that you get against this team, because it's few and far between, right? And for York, like you said, Dia, they did have those. Uh, even though they are the lowest seed in this tournament, 100 Thieves haven't lost yet, they did actually have a really solid game plan, and they executed quite well in it. And it was around Wally camping Dior just so, so hard and making sure he got ahead. It worked really well. They didn't get to translate that into a win, because again, it's 100 Thieves next, but I think uh, it was a really good testament to what York Lions is capable of, and even though they are this underdog team um, that they themselves might not be expecting to go the full distance in this tournament, it is through gameplay like that that actually could surprise us and surprise them. I'm excited to be surprised, that is for certain. I do, I do want to make note and sort of add on to this, that we've built up so much hype around the entire rift, and I want to bring a little bit of that back towards the bot lane. Kenji's Thresh, something that I'm going to be looking out for. I was <laughs> quite literally taking notes right now, as I do every game, typing out what champions we saw, where they're going. I wanted to type in Thresh. I just typed in Sir Kenji because because that is that is what I know him for and I was I was just just getting a little bit more excited and as we'll see how things play out at the very least Frost Forest will have the attention to spare towards this bot side as he has started top alongside Wally however who is opting for his own red buff I'm sure when you wrote down Kenji you had a little heart above the eye as well so that he's, he's playing your favorite champion here for him and I He's think the firm, nor deny. <laughs> to, to go a bit further on this as well, I think we we were both and a lot of the people on the broadcast as well with us uh, were a bit disappointed with a lot of the enchanter play that we saw from Kenji. It's not because he's bad at those champions, it's because it didn't quite work out with this new iteration of Winthrop that really does really does appreciate a, a bigger front line with these champions that are going to be farming up. You want to have these bridges um, and when you get into that territory, you get into like Thrash, Nautilus, Leona, and Kenji is very mechanically good at specifically this Thresh. So we're very, very excited to have him back on this champion. 
um, outside of the, uh, you know, some might call it Enchanter Jail. I just call it a nice vacation from having it, to hook people. I, I personally love Enchanters, but you could tell. Me too. I, I remember I, I remember listening to uh, Grapes and Hawk cast over the Winthrop games uh, just last week, and I hear them mentioning, constantly talking about how these flash plays from the Karma were the real <laughs> decider for Winthrop, and I was like, it's because he doesn't, he doesn't want to be playing Karma right now. And well, we'll see <laughs> yeah. how that ends up playing out. Frost Forest and Wally have both arrived. Wally now spotted in a knockup, maybe landing on Frost Forest. Nice sidestep for him. Means that he takes very little damage. However, Lantern is available. And the Ignite has gone down. So Invent ends up losing a summoner spell and ultimately looking pretty good. Kenji gets a nice hook onto Invent and a little bit of damage gets traded back. But the visit is well worth Frost Forest's time. And York Lions just hanging out in their in their bottom lane, and then their door camera shows up, and there's just weird bear man hanging out in his full onesie, just like running around outside. And they're like, "Can you can you, can you go check out what's going on, Wally? Please and thank you." They go deter him from actually doing anything. It both goes as well, so it's not completely in vain either. York Lions feeling okay about this trade, and oh. they they need to just scale up. They have the jinx, right? They they have that advantage later. Absolutely so. I mean, if, you, if you're able to stay even, you're going to be very, very happy. However, taking a look at the top side right now, Wally has been, at least been able to get out even a little bit ahead during this early game as on the Lee Sin, picking up not one but two Scuttle Crabs, and that is despite the intervention of Mabud, who took some time out of the top lane to go and try and push Lee Sin off of that very valuable miniature objective. Frost Forest, however, continuing on has managed to reset, is going on the second clear, and this is the Frost Forest that we were talking about a little bit earlier, the one who does like to take his time on these plays. He's applied some pressure, and now it's time for him to get some gold. Yep. We we might see some interesting maneuvers once it comes to the objectives, as it does look like Kenji and Frost Forest are paving the way for a potential Drake on spawn, just scouting that out, clearing all of the vision, actually, very thorough. And they really haven't seen Wally yet, he's still clearing. I like the way that they've been able to pair up here as well. They're even trying to look for Wally aggressively in the jungle with that control ward to spot yeah. him out. Should he be walking towards the dragon? I believe Scuttlecrab just expired, so not on vision, either of these guys. And it's for that reason that we see Sweet actually backing up to the tower and Ivano getting a little bit more room inside of the mid lane. Top lane, not exploding just yet. We're still waiting for that one to pop off. But as you mentioned, First Dragon looks like it should be going uncontested to Winthrop. I, I actually, on the topic of Sweet, I really like his lane positioning here. He played to the complete other side of the lane once he knew where Winthrop's jungle and support were. Um, and that's just, a, that's just a nice due diligence mid lane position thing that I appreciate from Sweet. But as you said, Winthrop were able to take that Drake uncontested and will lead to Frost for us going right back to farming his camps. Ah, yes. Home sweet home. Frost Angie. Forest. Looking for sweet right now. If this, uh, if this Syndra puts one foot out of line, <laughs> things could get very, very scary. Turn this However, car around. <laughs> exactly. That's the attitude you've got to have on the rift. Uh, York University, they end up walking up, however, and clearing out some of that vision. They don't actually spot Tenchi as he does take a brief return to the bot lane to make sure that Vex is all right. And that's what it's about. It's stabilizing for the bot side right now. As long as York University are focused on clearing out wards around mid lane, they can't focus on diving the bot lane, for example, and you are effectively keeping your AD carry safe. However, as we saw just before, we went back to our beautiful faces. That may very soon change. Yeah. Uh, hey, guys. We have a slight delay. We'll, we'll find out what that is shortly. Uh, yeah, the, the bot lane pressure game is is really just like a battle of, of wits right there and just like on the edge of a knife. Where you you have a brief moment of uh, relief for the side of Winthrop, and they're actually able to come in and swoop away, take that Drake, and get out of there as soon as possible. Um, it's it's really hard to actually combat that pressure when you're playing things like this Jinx Tom Kench lane, which, as we said, very very scale heavy. It will pay off very very huge in like 20 minutes. But uh, it hasn't been 20 minutes yet, and no, the pause time doesn't count. 
No, not, not just yet. I, I think one of the concerns that we've got to have is uh, Vex and Kenji are getting ganked. Is definitely the potential for things like this to happen. However, hook from Kenji changes everything. Invent, forced to flash, does tank that extra turret shot, and Vex steps a little far forward, taking some damage from Dior, but he does have the ability to heal up, of course, with the Severum, keeping him nice and topped up in lane, and Kenji turning that around in a very small way. Gets information on Wally as well, letting Frost Forest invade towards the top side. I usually wouldn't uh, make a big deal out of this one as a nice hook dodge, but uh, we were getting word that the reason that the game was paused is because of a potty break. So uh, That was just, fast, uh, actually. Yeah, it was, actually. Um, <laughs> Wait a minute. Efficient use of the bathroom. Well, I, 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 I kind of want it. I want more details. Who, who's, who's doing it? How, that's, a, that's a real gamer skill right there. We're not going to get it, of course, but uh, I, I'm impressed. <laughs> so, let me just say that. I'm impressed. <laughs> well, you, it doesn't take much to impress Diaz, it turns out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna contact Maybe. our analyst desk, see if I can get them to ask a few questions in the interview. You know, some some quick restroom usage, some good gameplay. That's all it takes to butter up Diatropa. Yeah, for, I, mean, <laughs> I need tips on how to decrease the time that I have spent at the restroom, <laughs> as opposed to playing League of Legends. Take a look at this, though. We got red, white, Ooh. and that should mean, theoretically, the Vex is strong, but the stun from Sweet changes everything. That flash up from the mid laner did a lot of good right there, and that's exactly why we were hyping up Avano and Sweet before the game. This is the bot lane pressure that we wanted to see from York Lions from the get-go. Very nicely played there by Wally and Sweet. Unfortunately, though, they don't get their Jinx involved in those kills, but she's still thanking them. Because those turret plates denying the minions away from Vex as well. I love that play. It's really nice to, to dive underneath that turret when you are playing red side as well. Vex has to the blast cone. You don't have to deal with that giant chunk of a wall as well. And they, they use all of that at their disposal very, very nicely. It's a, just a really solid team play. A little bit of a gamble up in top side. Khan's going, you should ult. And Mabud's going, no, 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 you should ult. And we're going to see one of them pretty soon, I would bet. Heal comes <laughs> in for Mabud, however, and with a spin away, he's going to yell coward as he fades into the night, despite the fact that he isn't <laughs> playing Scion. Frost Forest, with a little bit more information once again, has chosen to invade up towards the top side. And that's the real advantage for Winthrop right now. That it is. Is Lacan on this tank? He doesn't really want the... All of this extra damage that's coming at him, he might need to ult away. Yep, that's exactly what he does. Frost Forest trades his Ghost for Lacan's Flash, but he also comes out with a very, very large lead for Mabud specifically, as that is another Demolish proc onto this turret, and the Rift Herald that should be quick work of the turret 10 minutes in. Very nicely done, and plenty of gold being funneled into Mabad. I wouldn't mind a little bit of macro heart stats now to see <laughs> where everybody is landing in terms of the gold. Avano, however, underneath the tower is fortunately going to land himself in a safer spot, but Mabad should far and away be one of the favorites and sort of cascading down for Ooh. Winthrop. There it is! Such a massive lead for this guy, and Frost Forest coming up right behind him as well. Good call right there. Uh, for for York Lions, not all is lost. DR up there too with all of the turret plate. He's going to get another one right there. That's four of them for this Jinx. Meanwhile, mid, Wally. I, I saw it. I it. saw the glimmer yeah. in his eyes. He was thinking. There's like this half second whenever Elise in throws out a cue that your breath catches and you know, you know they could. And if it passes, <laughs> that's it. And Wally, Wally let it pass. And I think rightly so, respecting the fact that could be a little bit more challenging as dragon yeah. spawning <laughs> does mean that we get the second drake going over to Winthrop as I suspected. However, I didn't think that Mabud would be here for it. Uh, uh, Wally listening to the angel on his shoulder rather than the devil. Uh, won't make that play mid lane, but even though they've pressured mid lane all of these times, they actually are, as you said, down a couple of these drakes. It's led to York Lions finding some really solid plays around the bottom lane just not quite the pit. They've been bouncing around it, and Winthrop 
for Frost for us specifically, even though he's just been farming up, he will be there <laughs> for all these objectives. Dude, Wall Wally is coming. Wally's got level six. Oh, he you know. can make you miss position. Flay already comes in, but there's the kick, and Kenji should be going down. A nice hook lands oh. post mortem, and the Infernum does a lot of work, and Dior oh. just barely goes down to what feels like an infinitely ranged auto from Vex. Still clearing ways into the tower, still alive. York Lions get what they came for, but it comes at a bigger price than they were thinking. Invent, you yeah, ate the wrong guy, <laughs> not the Lee Sin. Oh, nice wait, trade in Very man. good. Ooh. Step a little bit too far forward on Avano. Frost Forest does pick up the kill, however, and teleport expended from Lacan in a little bit of an odd way oh, yeah. to come over towards the mid lane. That is really interesting. I mean, there's no turret for him to defend top anymore, so <laughs> just gotta go see what he can do elsewhere. He's getting a little bit bored twiddling his rock thumbs up there against Trindamir. A stone wall matchup, quite literally, for Lacan. Going right back up there. I said he didn't have a turret to defend, but this one's actually really low thanks to the Hullbreaker build. Yeah, this, is, this is really putting in a lot of work right now, and you can see why Hullbreaker has been prioritized so often, even though it is yeah. not a mythic item. Mythics, speaking up, starting to come in for Wally and Dior. First, interestingly enough, I'd expect the Frost Forest to be a little bit more ahead of the curve than Wally, but that kill participation looks like it's stacking up in the gold department. Frost Forest, he's there now. It's all right. There we go. We're, we're not super, super late. Um, and right here, you can see on the top of your mini map right there, uh, my bud will be, can, will be starting to take away some of the enemy team's camps, which will do a lot to make sure Frost for us stays in the game, uh, unless Lacan can steal this one away, but let's, let's take a look die, at what's right? going on here. They, surely they've got to die. Somebody's dead. Turret's Somebody's already dead. low. Kenji is walking forward. Gets that play. Frost Forest is in. Kenji instant flash away right now. And Dior still so, so low, but managing to survive as Sweet roams down once again. The Mega Death Rocket doesn't quite collect any gold, but it does push Winthrop away and should mean that this tower goes over to York. Definitely looks like it at this point. He has 20 seconds until the plates drop. They get the extra gold from it here for Jinx. Nobody is sticking around. It will be a turret trade across the rift thanks to Hullbreaker. Uh, but again, more gold into Jinx is really, really big for the team fights. Should Winthrop actually allow them to team fight? Oh my god, Wally, he just wants wow. to kick and he gets it and the stun to follow through from Sweet as well. Ultimate from the Sindra, the unleashed power, ends up collecting another kill on Avano and there we get to see some really nice jungle mid synergy. Yeah, that was awesome. The full commit to Avano as well. No flash for the victor of any kind. Sweet. You know, he, he's like, well, you could have kicked him closer to me, but I'll take what I can get. Flashes forward with the Scout of the Week as well. I love plays like that. And York Lions, again, are winning out on the skirmish. Huge, huge Lisa mechanics show us again why we're so excited for Wally. Sweet Roman down with a lot of confidence as well. These, these, these two seem like they are going to be our highlight players this game. Despite the resources committed to Dior, it is largely the Syndra and the Lee Sin that will make sure York Lions can stay healthy throughout the mid game, stay even as right now, Dior is picking another fight and Wally is here Ooh. for it. Taken down Kenji as the Mega Death Rocket connects and Wally, though he is low, he can't actually Get, oh, there we go. He can actually get away. Wow. Hailstorm, not quite doing it. <laughs> that guy's on very, very low HP. Um, I'm sure Ravano's going to go back and watch this and say, hey, I had a Corrupting Potion. That was the difference. I could have done it. Uh, but didn't quite chug the pot at the end of the day there. Uh, he'll, he'll go back and watch that one and be kicking himself, I'm sure. Uh, but, you know, that's all right. York Lions, they, they get that kill yet again off of Wally. And Dior is starting to get very scary. You mentioned that these two mid jungles are setting him up for success. But he's still going to have to do some heavy lifting, too. All of these Jinx auto attacks seem to be hurting already with just one item. Imagine three. Imagine four. Oh no, Kenji steps a little bit too far forward, and again, looks like he's going to go down. The oh. play does a little bit of work, but it ain't enough. Not by a long shot, and Lacan barely tickled by the return damage as well. It means Winthrop likely lose this next dragon, and perhaps their Trindamir if Mabud gets a little too cheeky. Uh, Kenji is just in such a ruthless cycle right now. He keeps trying to come back onto the rift and ward everything, getting ready for these objectives, but they just keep finding him exactly where he ends up off of that recall. Oh, 
Oh, it's just brutal. Four times in a row now. Got to get out of this cycle. It's really, really hard as a support where you're just trying to ward. You're just trying to get out there and help your team, and you just keep getting picked off. Oh, man. That could have been another one had he got hit by the Sonic Wave. I gotta say, though, 2-7 to seven in the kill score and the turrets equalized at this point, you would be looking at this game and surely believing that York Lions have a gold lead with the way that they have been playing, but they don't, and it's by about 1,000 gold, which isn't small. I'm sure that they are relatively happy with the even game state, but it, it ain't a lead, and with a lease-in composition, you're expecting a little bit more, so we'll see they can manage to find some ways to take fights against Winthrop because these Rift Heralds have really been their demise. Trying Raptum. to engage with the Gravitum. Oh my god, he stopped the knockup for the Tom Kench as well. Mega Death Rocket though, not going to be stopped if it does, as it does connect onto multiple members and Wally, see that brief moment of holding our breaths collectively, yeah. does not take the cue. That was a close call, but yet another structure taken by the side of Winthrop, and it's because of this objective control that they had early game. They got two Drakes early, they got two Rift Heralds early. Frost Forest has been on the prowl when it comes to those objectives, and you have to respect that one for York Lions. As it looks like the Gravity Storm is going to completely deny this turret. Really nicely done, although not a very flashy ultimate from Ivano. Take a look at top side though, Lacan being ever forced further away from the minion wave as Mabud continues to shove this, and these minions, importantly, are harder to kill every time he is able to empower them with the hole breaker. And as he steps away, this crucial ability to deny Lacan's involvement in team fights will be the thing that starts to push the dial in Winthrop's favor, if anything, because Wally's playmaking is never certain on a Lee Sin, no matter how good you are. There's always counterplay to a Lee Sin trying to get into your backline, trying to make you miss position with that kick. Malphite, not so much, but if Malphite isn't there, you got you got time. Bud definitely will appreciate the time as well, because you were you were saying about how Winthrop somehow has a lead. Oh, look no further than Mabud. I feel like we can, can go down to that top laner and zoom and enhance on this Trindamir. Just be like, well. If, we, if you look here on the on the presentation, you'll find a Trindamir, and you'll see that he is up 70 CS in this matchup. He has a 350 shutdown without participating in any kills. Ah, that's a lot. He's a monster. Absolutely terrifying. Gale Force completed now as well. I presume to finish off any necessary kills, get himself a little bit more of that extra Trindamir, Trindamir mobility that we all fear. Frost Forest plays defense on the red buff. He is going to be able to smite it, although that Q looked for a second like it was Wally taking it all away. Winthrop are managing to stabilize in this mid lane, and Frost Forest is also managing to maintain a CS lead of his own. Well, that's true, yeah. Udir farming up. And again, he's going into the enemy team's jungle to do it also, denying all of these camps from Wally and from all of York Lions, really all these extra structures that they've taken. It makes it a lot easier to stretch out and take all of these away. Kenji with the mobility boots is trying to get some wards down alongside it. And Mabud, even though he's not hunting alone right now, very well could take yet another turret. Red, white, or Vex at the moment does dissuade a bit of an engagement and the fact that Dior wasn't there. But stepping up to Lacan right now does seem a little bit risky, especially because Winthrop as mentioned before, have largely benefited from the fact that he hasn't been a big participant in these 5v5s. Only one assist to his name. And for right now, I think the, the longer it stays that way, the happier Winthrop are. The big problem for them coming up is that Dragon is the next objective, and everybody knows that they're going to have to be there. So saving as many summoners as you can, saving that flash on Vex, most importantly, is going to be crucial to avoid instant death at the hands of an unstoppable force. The next 40 seconds is going to be really interesting to see what Mabud's decision making is. He's staying in the bottom side of the rift right now, which tells us that Winthrop are interested in going on the other side of the rift because he's just there to take these structures and maybe help out in a fight afterward. You can see they're on the side of Winthrop really aren't going for this Drake at all. They're not setting up any vision for it. They're playing off of the pressure that Mabud is providing them, and they're using that to set up vision on the Baron. It's 
exactly where Frost Forest is. They could still go over to the bottom side and go for Drake, but it does look like they're completely okay giving that one up. My bud has so much gold that it'd be hard to convince him to actually go for a team fight here, even though he's really strong. Trading over the second Infernal Dragon is pretty darn risky, but they're getting farm on Avano completely uncontested for it. Will be caught by Lacan, but in specifically Avano's case, I don't think it uh -oh. cares as much. Vex, however, still does retain that flash. Flashes and Gale Forces away, but while he's on the hunt for him, Q connects, and just like that, Vex is gone. The late flash dooming him. This very well could be a barren call here, Dia. Frost Forest on the other side of the pit. He has Smite. He does not have Flash. So his only way of getting in is through a Thresh Lantern or that Blast Cone. York Lions don't actually know where he is right now. Okay, now they do. You just have to stop this Baron, though. Ivano just has to participate in keeping it from going down. But Frost Forest doesn't have Flash. Can't get into the pit. And as a result, this ends up going down to York. But my bud... Is it still able to take this inhibitor? <laughs> I thought they were going to have to stall for longer, but uh, it looks like Holbreaker's kind of monstrous. Uh, impressive play from Lacan right there around the Baron. I really, really liked that look from him. Is your oh, oh, smite? <laughs> oh my He's god, out. the smite was off cooldown. Tragedy strikes. Man, clever moves from Dior. Very, very narrowly survives that. Yeah, again, it could have picked Lacan. Lacan popping the blast gun is huge there, because uh, Sir Kenji did not position to get the lantern over the wall for uh, an attempted steal from Frost Forest, and after that blast cone is gone, Frost Forest has ghosts, so he has no way of actually getting into the pit. I really like that position from Lacan, and it does net York Lions an uncontested Baron. At the moment, that is an advantage that does keep them within touching distance of Winthrop, and when we consider the team fight that they have, even further ahead, because now Lacan's able to group up effectively, try and force four B5s underneath the tower of a bud, can't get as much value out of the split push, and right now Lacan tanks literally everything, and isn't even below half HP. That says a lot about the state of the game, about the value that this Malphite is providing, with Unstoppable Force built, still available, Ooh. and Vex not having his own flash to reposition while he takes the front lines. Frost Forest manages to dodge the Super Mega Death Rocket, and Winthrop somehow retain their base. There's a big Trinimir and a flash hook. Ultimate still available for Mabud as well. He can't access this back line. Frost Forest on an oh. excellent flank as Lacan goes for it. He finds Avano, and the kill's already come through onto Vex. Dior trying to take down Kenji in the meantime. It looks like the call is to retreat, however, as Frost Forest and Mabud have made quick work of the front line. Now hunting for Dior, however, with Avano on a sliver of HP. Mabud still has the undying rage, and it's Ooh. unfair to watch oh. the last Mono barely connecting, but Dior goes down, and it is Mabud that completes the ace. Dior was an absolute madman in that Ooh. last team fight. He had so much awareness to flash over that wall and pelt everyone with rockets, but he was just out of mana and couldn't finish it off. But you know who can finish it is Winthrop. They're in the base, Frost Forest. He actually doesn't have enough damage. He's going to run away. <laughs> but almost, it, it, it feels bad as Sunfire Cape Udyr. You're not, not quite the Trick 2G split pushing dream you wish for Mabide. ultimate still down could be in danger but does manage to dodge the second resonating strike that goes his way and will be able to reset and with that winthrop get themselves back into the driver's seat again after having lost the baron looks like york lines were going to be able to take a team fight perhaps even win the game but an excellently played team fight from winthrop stops that Winthrop actually did a really, really good job the whole time, but again, I want to say that if Dior had, like, maybe 400 more mana, I'm pretty sure he cleans up that entire fight, but he just ran out. He could not use his rockets any longer, and that's just a complete pity, honestly, because his, his spacing and his auto attacks were really, really good, and maybe if he had the extra range as well with the rockets, he could have been able to outspace my bud just a little while longer. Didn't quite manage it, and it is Winthrop who pull ahead yet again. They haven't quite finished it out. They didn't take any of those Nexus turrets with Frost for us trying to go into the base, and oh wow, with the Gravitum down, actually, uh, no Moonlight Vigil with the the Drake up. This could be uh, secure for York. 
Well, he goes ahead and hops forward, but doesn't quite feel confident enough to continue after the use of the safeguard. Mabud, ever pressuring, though, makes this a no-win scenario for York. They can't quite engage because Winthrop are playing at a distance, and they're losing their base, which is the real curse of the Trendemir, the reason I can only presume that we saw it first picked, and it is proving to be really effective against York. Mabud gets that inhibitor and still may get out alive. The Gale Force repositioning him against the oh. kick from Wally, and and even still committing the ultimate and award to do it. Mabud gets out 700 gold of a bounty. Man. And Wally not quite confident that the flash kick would secure a kill. He does give over all of that. All of that time to Mabud and the Drake as well. Winthrop get every single thing across the Rift. And Riftmaker is just the... Or not Riftmaker. Hullbreaker. I got confused, I'm sorry. Hullbreaker is really just introducing an entire other element to this game, and Winthrop are fully taking advantage. Is that element pain? Um, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, it feels like it. I'm, I'm looking at York, and honestly, in this situation, I, I'd be struggling with what to do, because it, it's difficult. Winthrop are playing really well, and... Frost Forest, for his part, has been a pretty big part of that. We've talked about the Avana Frost Forest combo that needed to step up here, and these, these gravity wells and Frost Forest positioning in the front line has been a big part of why York University can't engage. And this Udyr being very tanky, combination with Sir Kenji making it difficult for him to get caught out, makes it so that York University can't engage, they can't stop the push into their base, and now, perhaps they can't stop a Baron, because it's up in 15 seconds, and... I don't know how they're going to respond to it. They have to keep Lacan in a position where he's keeping Mabud at bay and being a front line to his team. You can't really be at two places at once if you're Malphite. So he's going to have to fully commit to one, forsake the other. And uh, even then, that might be a problem because I don't know if he can even survive against Mabud at this point. Oh, no. I might actually go down. Navori Quick Blades are doing a lot here as oh, well to no. provide this constant uh, cooldown reduction. And on the other side of this, York are actually the ones starting the Baron, trying to take the aggressive move first, but instead they're the ones getting poked out as Wally looks for Avano oh. in the back line. He gets caught where he does not belong and forced out with that Blast Cone Dior on hundreds of HP remaining with Frost Forest looking for the interrupt on all of these oh. resets. Remember, this is tragedy because the Frost Forest goes down. The answer is in. Oh. Vex has flashed in. Wally ends up taking down a member, taking down Vex as well. But all the while, the push is going on in this bot side and Mabud is causing chaos. Avano is going to be able to pick up Wally with that very last death ray and completely unleash Mabud, who is not afraid of Lacan. He's ignoring him and just taking down the Nexus Towers. Oh, he's got the demolish. He's actually going to be able to deal enough They're damage ending? to this even through the auto attack slow. Lacan, he has armor, but does He're he ending. have magic resistance? Avano has enough damage to kill him, and Dia, Winthrop are going to win this first game no thanks way. to Mabud's Trindamir. In the weirdest of ways as well. What a performance from Mabud. Taken RMC's prediction for a top lane fest and turning it into one of the weirdest ways to win. One of the most difficult to orchestrate as well. Split push compositions, 1-4 very very hard and it's felled a lot of even better teams in its execution but Winthrop look practiced on it there's two things that make it easier though Dia one is having a really solid top laner like my bud and two all breaker that item seems a little bit powerful if I'm honest I think Lacan is gonna have to consider picking a Hullbreaker champion himself or trying to deny those away because Truthfully, I really liked York's skirmishing and team fighting, but they just couldn't get away with only doing that in the game that has Hullbreaker in it. And that's the game that we're playing right now. It, it feels kind of bad because Dior kind of gets robbed by that as well. Like he can't really do anything <laughs> against Hullbreaker, but that guy was popping off. I was really yeah. excited to see him and I can't wait to see what the adaptations that York are going to make they can face up against Winthrop in their next match because this is a best of three well York are one game away from being el eliminated that one game could very well go their way so we are going to find out what our analysts have to say and then we'll be right back with game two